let's uh, try to, at this moment, steel man the argument for the natural origin of the virus. So just to, to clarify, so Wuhan is actually, despite what it might sound like to people, is a pretty big city. There's okay. a lot of people that live in it. 11 million. So not only is there the Wuhan Institute of Virology, there's other centers that do work on viruses. Yes. But there's also a giant number of markets. And everything we're talking about here is pretty close together. So yep. uh, when I kind of look at the geography of this, I think when you zoom out, it's all Wuhan. But when you zoom in, there's just a lot of interesting dynamics that could be happening and what yeah. the cases are popping up and what's being reported, all that kind of stuff. So I think the people that argue for the natural origin, and there's a few recent papers that come out arguing this, it's kind of fascinating to watch this whole thing. But I think what they're arguing is that there's this Hunan market, that's one of the major markets uh, the wet markets in uh, Wuhan, that uh, there's a bunch of cases that were reported from there. So if I look at, for example, the Michael, Michael Warabi yeah. perspective that he wrote in Science, he argues, he wrote this a few days ago, the, the predominance of early COVID cases linked to Hunan market and this can't be dismissed as a certainment bias, which I think is what people argue that you're just kind of focusing on this region because yeah. a lot of cases came, but there could be mm -hmm. a, a huge number of other cases. So people who argue against this say that this is a later stage already. Right. Um, uh, so he says, no, he says, this is, this is the epicenter. And uh, this is a clear, uh, evidence that, uh, circumstantial evidence, but evidence nevertheless that this is where the jump happened to humans, the big explosion. Maybe not case zero, I don't know if he argues that, but w the early cases. So what do you make of this whole idea? Can you steel man it yeah. before yeah. we so, talk about the and, and my goal here isn't to attack people on, on the other side. And, and, and if my feeling is if there is evidence that's presented um, that that should change my view. I, I hope that I'll be open-minded enough to change my view. And certainly Michael Warby is a thoughtful person, a respectful, a respected scientist. And, and I think this work is, is contributive work, but I just don't think um, uh, that it, 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 that it's as significant as has been reported in, in, in the press. And so what his argument is, um, is that there is an early cluster in December of 2019 around the, the Huanan seafood market. And even though he himself um, argues that the original uh, uh, breakthrough case, the original case, the index case where the first person infected um, uh, happened earlier, happened in October or November, so not in December, his argument is, well, what are the odds that you would have this number, this cluster of cases in the Huanan seafood market, and if the origin had happened someplace else, wouldn't you expect other um, other clusters? And it's not an entirely implausible argument, but there are reasons why I think it's uh, that it's this is not nearly as determinative as has been reported. And I certainly had a lot of I and others had uh, tweeted a lot uh, about this, and that is first uh, the the people who were infected in this cluster. It's not the earliest known uh, virus of the SARS-CoV-2, it began mutating. So this is, it's not the original SARS-CoV-2 there. So you, it had to have happened someplace else. Two, the people who were infected in the market um, weren't infected in the part of the market where they had these kinds of animals that are considered to be candidates um, for, as an intermediary species. And third, there was a bias, actually I'll have four things. Uh, third, there was a bias in the early um, assessment in China of what, what they were looking for. They were asked, did you have exposure to the market? Because I think in the early days when people were, were figuring things out, that was one of the questions that, uh, that was asked. And fourth, and probably most significantly, we have so little information about those early cases in China. And that's really unfortunate. I know we'll talk about this later because uh, the Chinese government is preventing access to all of that information, which they have, which could easily help us get to the bottom, at least know a ton more about how this pandemic started. And so this is, it, it's like grasping at, at straws 
in the dark with gloves on. That's right. But to steel man the argument, we have this evidence from this market. And uh, yes, the Chinese government has uh, turned off the lights, essentially. So we have very little data to work with. But this is the data we have. So who's to say that this data doesn't represent a much bigger data set that a lot of people got infected at this market, where it, even at the parts, or especially at the parts where the, the meat, the infected meat was being sold? So that could be true, and it probably is true. The question is, is this the source? Is this the place where this began? Or was this just a place where it was amplified? And I certainly think that it's it's extremely likely um, that the Huanan seafood market was an, a point of amplification. And it's, it's just answering a different question. Basically, what you're saying is it's very difficult to use the market as evidence for anything because it's probably not even the starting point. So it's just a good place for it to continue spreading. That's certainly my view. What Michael Warby's argument is, um, Michael, is that, well, what are the odds of that, that we're seeing this amplification this in, in the market? And if we, if let's, let me put it this way. If we had all of the information, if, if the Chinese government hadn't um, blocked access to all of this, because there's blood bank information, there's all sorts of information, uh, and based on a full and complete understanding, uh, we came to believe that all of the early cases um, were at this market. I think that would be a stronger argument than uh, what this is so far. But everything leads to the fact that why is it that the Chinese government, um, which was frankly after a slow start, the gold standard of doing viral tracking for SARS-1, mm -hmm. why have they apparently done so little and shared so little? I think it it asks it it, it begs a lot of questions.